Hi guys, this is Alice from Straight Co. This is the second part of the two parts video series um, that help walk you through how to create your own Shopify shoe bot with Python. If you haven't watched the first video, go ahead to watch the first one. In this video, we're going to cover how to create a second function and how to complete your script with the first function. I'm really excited, so let's get started. Okay, so last time we uh, talked about how the bot should be able to monitor a certain product we are looking for on futuresneakerboutiques.com. It should be able to purchase that product automatically when it becomes available. To do that, we, we, we decided to go for two functions. One is availability check. And another function is action of purchasing the product. To have them work together, the logic goes, um, if something is available, then I should be able to purchase that product. Otherwise, I would just simply print not available. We're going to cover this buy product function and how to build this function. In the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about wrapping it up together. If this doesn't make perfect sense right now, that's okay. I'll talk more about that as well. So from last video, you should already have this function built. And so to start off with the second function, we're just going to import uh, actually from Selenium. Import web driver. Okay, so to start, uh, you want to set your driver just to open up a browser. You say driver equal to web driver dot chrome drive chrome and you give it a executable executable path and to get that path you want to just go to wherever your chrome driver is at right click and go to property there you have the path and it could be anywhere so we pretty much copy and paste that and make sure you add R in from to avoid any problems okay oh okay and you wanted to add the file name which is Chrome driver and as soon as you enter that you should see a browser pop up Okay, so since I'm expecting this function to return a URL, all I'm trying to do is to go to that link and immediately purchase whatever that is on that link. All right, so this is a function I'm trying to create right now. So the first thing is to go to that URL. To do that, you do driver.get and you pass in a string of the URL. I'm just going to use this one as example. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, you just type in here. Okay. So you should get that page load up. So to check out, you know, one thing people might like to do is to select a size. So let me show you how to do that right now. To select a size, um, you go to the size area, right click and click inspect. And you should be able to read the page HTML. And then you can move around and should hover different um, items. So it tells you where the HTML is for on the page. So I'm just going to use size 10 as an example. Um, if you look here, it, you're looking at div element. So to get that, I'm going to I'm going to try to click this right. So you're trying to imagine what you would do normally. So I probably click a size and I'll add to card. So right here, I'm going to tell it to click this button. Okay, so do that, you want to first find that element. We're going to find it with um, the help of XPath, right? So element by XPath. to double slash um, to tell it to go to anywhere on this page. I'm just going to show you if I do just div because I know it's a div element. You'll get one element. But one thing here is, you know, if you do define elements with a s, 
you should be able to find all of the div element on that page. And there are a lot of them, so to, you have to be a little bit more precise here. Remember the trick, uh, you can do S or without S. So I'll usually start off with finding as many as items as I can, have the same um, name or class name or whatever, so then I know that I'm, I'm selecting exactly the one I'm looking for, right? So if you just go with uh, this at first, you might think you got the size 10, but it could be a lot of other things as well. So we start off with um, S. If you look a little closely, also has an ID, it has a data value. So I'm gonna go deeper into that to be more precise. So to do that, tell it the class name. You do a bracket at whatever class name that is. I'm going to do data value 10 because if you look here, this also have an ID of para1. So you might be selecting many different things. Um, but I doubt there are many things named data value 10. So, And I'm going to say the value is 10. Okay. So I should be able to find one element now. Now I know it's only one element, I can delete the S, and I can say click that just by using the built-in function, click. Okay, so now I have selected size 10. Okay, so I pretty much put whatever had worked so far onto the script so I don't forget them. So um, I like to keep all the imports on the top so that would keep things more clean. After we selecting size, we probably want, want to go ahead and click Add to Cart. And you use pretty much the same way you, we just did for selecting size to get this button. You right click, click Inspect. And, um, I like to go for the button. This is what we had earlier, right? So we just change it to button. And a little tip you wanted to go for something a little more precise um, instead of maybe like type equal submit there might be more things like that however you're probably not gonna have anything else with a class name add to car defaults so let's see if we can get that one Okay, so let's try to click it. Okay, that works out. So next, um, it has this tab show up. We want to click check out again, apparently. So exact same way you did it for that um, button. Again, when you right click and you look at this, you want to go for something very precise. Uh, you don't want it to do button type you could submit because there might be multiple buttons like that. So I'm going to go for name checkout or value checkout with this little arrow. Actually, name checkout is great. And when you enter it, it already clicks the button. Okay, so after that, it prompt us to this page, and you have to enter some of your uh, personal information. And that's a little bit different, but also can be done very easily in Selenium. So I'm going to try to enter the email right now. So the very similar way, driver.find element by xpath. And you want it to do... So if you look at this here, it says input placeholder equal email. It looks pretty good for me. Brackets at uh, placeholder equals uh, email. So you should be able to find an element. Um, I want to type something here. Um, so really easy, you just do dot send keys 
and you pass into a string of whatever you wanted to do. So I'm going to do exampled at gmail.com. So pay attention to this area when I enter this command. So it was like quickly typed up. Because I've uh, tried this earlier, so it's not sure because <laughs> it's a fake number, so it's suspecting, but you're not going to have that problem. Next, you do the same thing for, you know, you'll put in your name. So let's take a look at the name. So placeholder and first name. And right here, I'm going to add, change this string to Alice. And it types in Alice. So the same way you go for these two, you'll continuously do it the rest of the information. Then in the very end, you can just find this button and click it, or you can press enter um, by sending key. And I'm going to tell you right now what enter key is. Um, it's a little different here. Okay, so we have set up. Um, a lot of stuff now. In the very end, I refresh the page. I just want to show you how to press the enter key. So the last item I want to enter is the phone numbers. I will add you single quotation slash uh, UE007. That is just what the enter key is um, written in a different format. So if I do that, take a look at what it would do. It will actually go in and put in the phone number, then press enter immediately after that. So you can see that, oh, since I refresh your page, other information not filled, but you can see the um, enter keys being pressed automatically. Now, if you follow the instruction alone, you should have everything else entered. You should have a lot of this stuff. For example, the size, we selected the size, the uh, add to cart, the checkout, enter email, first name, street, city, zip code, phone number, plus the enter key, obviously. And um, to run the whole thing, again, usually I like to add a little comma, on, uh, I mean, common on the side so you know what each function is doing. Now uh, sometimes you can wait some time before each action is performed. Um, so we're going to do that. Okay so we did let's take a look of what we have. Um, I think I'll walk you guys through how to perform um, the add to card clicking functions and click the checkout button. Um, I think I also talked about email, entering first name and email. One of them and I just kind of filled it in the rest um, including last name, address, you know, city, and zip code. Um, only thing that's different is we just talk about the phone number includes the end enter key as well. I think you guys can probably do these on your own. So it's very, very similar um, as the first two that we did. So after I've done that, um, we can run the test to make sure everything's running smoothly. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to add a little waiting element. So that is to prevent if, you know, the program to not run really smoothly. Sometimes, you know, all the action are trying to like go one immediately after the other one. Sometimes the website will glitch a little, might delay your whole process. So to do that, um, you can just do import time and then you can do time dot sleep parenthesis of the seconds you want to wait. And I'm just going to put one here. You can experiment how many seconds you want to wait between each actions. If you enter, well, you click the checkout button, you can kind of see 
you can wait for like two seconds or three seconds. But if you just enter email, you can just wait for one second or 0.5 seconds before you moved on to the next. You kind of want it to be the shortest time possible. So then the whole thing go through very fast. And you can you will have to experiment a little bit if you want it to be as fast as possible. Otherwise, you can just do a uh, time to sleep of one second. And then we're going to just put them right after each action, not the last one. And then I'm going to run them, uh, the whole thing, and show you what that will look like. And I had to press enter key earlier. So now I'm going to delete the information. And I'm going to start off with running enter email, enter first name, last name, street, city, zip code, and phone. So see how the comment here comes really handy so you know which action is what. Right click, I'm just going to run these. It enters email, first name, last name, my address, example, city, zip code, phone number. And then press the enter key. I typed email twice, so it's not really smooth here. But you can see how that's working. And if you like to put in your actual information, it will take you to a checkout page where you can put in your actual card information. And I'm not going to do that here, but it's the exact same way we have done over here. Now let's let, let's talk about how to make these into function and complete our whole script. Okay, so uh, the whole scripts uh, now has the availability check function, and we're going to make the byproduct function. So to do that, um, okay, I thought I didn't put import time because you see how there's this uh, little orange line. Um, that means there's an error in spider, anyways. So. So you can hover your mouse around it, and it will tell you what's the problem. So I have to import time. OK. OK, so now I'm going to call this by product. And this is going to, I'm just going to set as this for now. And to do that, I just select all of these and click tab to move it then um, I'm going to say since they are going to work together right um, I want this to be able to take in this product URL here so I'm going to say it takes in one variable. Let's call it URL. And instead of going to this random web page, I'm going to say I'm going to go get the string of URL. So whatever you feed it, like uh, the, URL, the variable you pass onto this function is going to go to here. So if you remember, this is going to open up your browser. And this one's gonna the browser to the URL you want it to go to. In this case, this function will work for any URL now instead of that particular URL. So another great thing about this is that when you have functions and you can actually run the whole thing and nothing is being called, so they wouldn't actually perform any actions. Now things are wrapped in functions, you can actually run the whole scripts. It's not going to activate any of the functions. So if you run it, right, so nothing happens because there is no lines that's calling the functions. So in another word, if I call availability check, availability check will run, but now it's wrapped in a function, it will not run without a call action. Okay, so if you remember, ability checks checks whether something is available and will return false if it's not. Now, if it is available though, it's gonna return the product URL. 
And so I'm going to say my URL is going to equal to availability check. If it is a URL, obviously, I'm going to proceed to the next. Otherwise, it is not going to proceed at all. So if my URL does not, so this is not equal to, not equal to false, I'm going to buy products with feeding it the URL, my URL, right? Um, otherwise, else I'm going to print no. So first thing it's going to do, type the wrong thing, first thing it's going to do, it's going to say my URL is going to equal to whatever returns from availability check. And if my URL is not equal to false, which happens only when the product is not available, I'm going to go ahead and buy the product. Otherwise, I'm just going to print no. Well, let's just try for now, like how this runs. This is no, it's not available. Okay, that was really fast. Let's try something that's available then. Let's go to... To test it, you can also run something in here line by line to see if everything's working. So I am going to print um item here so it didn't find an item so let's uh, actually go to this page and see if we can find something that's available right now okay so um, I just changed it to something that I know for sure exists and I'm going to run this availability check Um, I'm just going to run the whole script. It still says no, so I know something's wrong and to troubleshoot, it's kind of like a good example. I think um, what I would do is I would follow through line by line. For example, I would run just this part. If I know the item exists, it's going to print find items. You can use return outside of the function, by the way. So, it says found item. So clearly something's wrong. So you got for product in product. If this, then I'm gonna print found item. Otherwise, I'm gonna return false. So what is happening here? This needs to be over there. It's probably when I um, copy and paste that made some mistake. But the reason why that is there's like uh, 50 products for example it's going through the first second third fourth so if the first item is not this it will immediately go to the else statement right so when it's like this it's going to come into product one and it says is the product this equal to this uh, hoodie no then I'm going to return false. When you return anything, you automatically end the loop. So now I move this to here. That means I'm going to loop through everything from the first to the last product. And if anything, they, any product has the title name of this over here, I'm going to return the product URL only if nothing else has stopped this for loop, I'm going to return false in the very end. So let's run this script again. Found item. And now it's going to the page with the given URL. 
which is exactly the title I put in. And it says it cannot find the element of size 10 because it's not a sneaker. And let's try to run it again with a sneaker so we can, you know, go with the size, shoe size. So now I switch to uh, Puma X Polaroid. Uh, I think this is a sh sneaker or shoes. So they should have this size. And let's try to run the script again. Found the item. Launched a browser. And it is going onto the page that I was looking for. This is an unfortunate example, but uh, it doesn't have the size of that the one I was looking for. Oh, it does. Okay. Uh, maybe I, I clicked the button, but there's no other size. So you can see everything's happening automatically. Entering the email, my last name, address, city, zip code, phone numbers, and now it's pressing enter to go to the next page. And the exact same thing, you can do it with your actual zip code. And you just put in your credit card numbers. The shoes will be purchased as soon as it becomes available. Now, this is a, this is purchasing the shoes if it's available, though. Something else I can do here is I can wrap it up in a while loop. So while true, while true, just happens all the time. It's always true. So that just says all the time, no matter what, I would do this. Right. And if I purchase a product, I want to break out of the while loop. So it's the exact same thing that I have going on. So let's say I have some shoes that doesn't exist. I'm pretty sure X J Y. Okay, this is is there's no product in that. Um, so if I run this now, it's going to be printing no constantly. So it's checking all of the time until it becomes available. Now I'm going to stop this. So if it is available though, I'm going to go ahead and purchase it. So you can run this script whenever you think some product is about to be released on this site within you know a few hours or a few minutes. So you don't have to sit here and watch if it had launched on a specific Shopify site. And I'm going to attach a link of uh, different kinds of Shopify sites that you can try out this methods on. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that tutorial was helpful. And if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, that will complete this shoe bot with this video. And if you haven't watched the first video, go ahead and watch that. It talks about um, how to set up the first function, the availability check function. And the last thing I didn't mention is that um, the name of the product, you can just change it to whatever item that you, whatever product name you're looking for, and it should serve you the same purpose. And this is a very general tutorial. You can use it for any other purpose for other Shopify site, other products, um, different kind of shoes, or different time. And feel free to experiment with a different waiting time and a different function you have to perform with Selenium. Thank you guys so much. Um, like and subscribe if you find this video helpful and then we will be posting more videos every week.